Aisha Mai said that he cry so he Chris do he what is cracking ladies gents boys girls guys and dolls and let probably Gardner probably well done so let's talk about let us talk about the uh, the absolute gift that Gardner has bestowed upon us let's talk about the Horace Call series now I'm gonna call this the Horace Call the horror so far something like that because I'm only talking about the first five bucks because um, whenever Gardner's box comes up on lit and I am like oh yeah I'm the guy that's doing videos on these books people say oh have you read the new books because the new books obviously they're not called call of the it's just Jagoku uh, reptilian odyssey 2 electric boogaloo and hunger of the kangaroo didgeridoo so yeah this they sort of drop the title so I'm just talking about the first five bucks in this uh, video I'm just talking about what's actually established within like I suppose the law are we are we gonna make a law for uh, Garner's uh, twisted version of Chicago I don't know it's up to you guys because in all honesty like I, I don't really know so yeah so we're just gonna talk about the bucks we're gonna talk about the impact we're gonna talk about uh, just talk about the Horace Cole series so far because in all, in all honesty in my honest opinion these books aren't bad they aren't bad for young adults fiction with like a spooky theme they're like Halloween-y kind of thing because they're not necessarily scary I wouldn't say they're horror they're just sort of goofy campy wacky you know because uh, there's a point in Call of the Crocodile where Joe and Joe is the father of Pete Joe is just chugging this can of Bud Light and he's like the guy who gave him the can is just staring at him just completely terrified he's in he's in sheer shock as Joe is just chugging his can he, he does the can in two steps so he has one step and he starts chugging it so Joe's chugging it he's making awkward eye contact with Pete there's a uh, bad light dripping down his chin onto his shirt you know you got families walking around with their children they're just watching him it's all pretty good as you can tell in uh, Call of the Crocodile the writing isn't necessarily that good. I don't think Gardner intended for Joe to just chug a can of Bud Light. I just don't think he realised that you can't just drink a can casually in two steps. And that's one of the things. With, uh, with these books in general, a lot of the writing doesn't feel very organic. It doesn't feel very natural. People do things that seem very odd, very surreal. If you watch the previous videos that I've done on all of these books so far, um, one of my biggest complaints is always that it, the writing is always really uncanny. There's a point in Call of the Crocodile, for instance, where, what's his face, Peter, Pete, asks for a writing utensil rather than a pen or a pencil. He just says, can I have a writing utensil? Now, let me ask you, ladies, gents, lit, do any of you refer to your pens or pencils as utensils? Do you say, hold on, boys, i got to... Let me reach into my utensil case, pull out a utensil. I'm going to measure this with my ruler and my writing utensil. No, I'm going to measure this with my measuring utensil and my writing utensil. It's one of those things that people just don't say and that sort of plagues the series as Gardner sort of develops as an author, as a writer himself. You know, you've got Call of the Crocodile and Call of the Arcade, both books. In my honest opinion, that's in sort of like the same weird vein of campiness. You're introduced to Pete, Mark, Johnny, Sam, um, yeah, just them three at the moment, I think. Um, and they're cool characters. I saw a thread on Lit. Well, no, an Anon asked me on Lit if Mark and Johnny were in a homosexual relationship. But I don't know. It's never really specified. It's one of those things, ladies and gents, where I think uh, you can headcanon it in. I don't think, like, Gardner's going to be like, no, these characters are not gay. Get out of my thread. I think it's going to be one of those things where if enough people say that they're a gay couple and Gardner would write them in as being gay. I think it's just one of those things. It doesn't really matter in the long run because you have these three boys versus the world. That's the whole premise of the Horrors Call series so far. Call of the Kappa is more of a self-enclosed story. It doesn't really involve Pete that much, neither Mark nor Johnny. I mean, Peter's in it, but he's, he's, he's just a brief cameo at that point. But yeah, the main story of these books so far seems to focus on Johnny, Mark, Pete versus the world. Now you got three protagonists, primarily versus three antagonists. And so this battle through uh, good and evil and the paranormal. And um, yeah, the series is honestly pretty fun, guys and girls. It's not necessarily the best written thing. It is young adult horror fiction. But at the same time, it makes for an entertaining read. Like, Call of the Crocodile? Okay, I think it's called the Ar No, I think it was Call of the Crocodile. Well, I had to stop reading halfway through because I had a headache. But the books aren't that bad. The books aren't that bad. The only downside I will say is that 
you know, you had Call of the, not Call of the Arcade, then it seems like Gardner got an editor, maybe, because Call of the Cradle and Call of the Kappa, um, they're written, the writing's noticeably better, the book's formatted properly, but there is no weird twist at the end. And Gardner didn't seem that enthusiastic about these two books. And I say that, but you can sort of pick up on it whilst reading the books. There isn't that sort of energy, there isn't a wacky twist, there is no real mention of uh, conspiracies, that sort of thing. Whereas, you know, Call of the Arcade and Call of the Crocodile, they're both fun, they're both wacky, they're both campy. And I mean campy in a fun, old sense. Maybe it's a bit outdated at this point to be using that word. But the bucks are fun, and then the fun is dropped with uh, Call of the Kappa, Call of the Cradle, and then picked back out with Call of the Cherokee. I don't know what was up with these two bucks, um, but who cares? Because at the end of the day, we're talking about the series as a whole. So when it comes down to uh, the Horace Call series, the horror so far, what have we got? We have got, like I said, three boys versus the world. Now, Pete is very much the main character, in my opinion, followed by Johnny and Mark. And then with the bad guys, you got Sam, Tim, and the ninja, who I can't remember his name, because either the name was just cringe, or I just don't care. Um, yeah, it's, it's these three boys versus the three bad guys. And this is the thing, it's just nice. It feels like, uh, like I said, it feels like young adult horror fiction. Because that's, at the end of the day, that's what it is. You got these boys, and maybe they engage with some paranormal, supernatural creatures. And that's always really cool. But then you have, like, uh, Sam. Sam's this grown man, he wears a Hawaiian shirt, he's part of the Ouroboros cult. There is a cult, sort of, in the background of these books. It's more pronounced in Call of the, Cra no, Call of the Crocodile and Call of the Arcade. I think it's mentioned a bit more in those books because at the end of the I'm not gonna spell called the crocodile, almost dead. But yeah, it's more pronounced than them. They sort of it's sort of at the back. It's pushed to the back in the newer books. Um, but yeah, Sam's part of this cult and he's just this absolute mad lad who just wants to bring death upon the world I suppose and that's his goal and he works towards that goal. You got Tim who has a massive forward sort of looks like the four-headed one from Ant and Deck and I don't really get him he's just more of a sidekick he's more of just like a sadistic killer kind of guy and then you got the ninja who's just sort of like a ninja he's just a meme he's like the Power Rangers when they were ninjas rather than whatever they're doing now so we got these characters and that's basically it you know the stories are more or less self-contained I think you know Call of the Crocodile you know the twist is very much just the story and that's it it's not really mentioned. I think Tulpa is coming to play at some point. I'm, I'm going to mention this vaguely, not the spoiler. But Tulpas are in the book, and um, guess what? They're never mentioned again. Call of the Arcade. I think Polybius comes up once more in Call of the Trochi. It doesn't really carry on. Call of the Kappa. The Kappa. I, he makes a cameo, but it's not necessarily mentioned. He's not referred to as a cameo as a Kappa in Call of the Trochi. The main character is briefly mentioned, I think, in Call of the Cradle and Call of the Trochi but they sort of brushed off like how that happened didn't it call of the cradle call of the cradle what actually happens in this i can't remember but i uh, sort of repressed it already tim is introduced tim's introduced that's the main thing that i can remember from call of the cradle and then call of the trochi where it all comes to a crescendo um it's honestly pretty good everything just sort of comes together call of the trochi is sort of where the references come into play so yeah, we have these five books. They all sort of mingle with each other. Called Kappa Less, so called Cradle. Not that impressing, but it does, it does. But yeah, that's about it. And that's all. There isn't really a lot to these books, guys. It's just three boys versus the world. You got these three antagonists who constantly antagonize. And then yeah, there's always like some sort of weird element to the books where there's like sort of some weird twist. Um, Call of the Cradle has this weird little red leprechaun chasing down Pete because he wants to blowtorch him and that, it just sucks, um, it's not it's not very good in my opinion. Call of the Kappa, is it grounded in reality? Did it filter anyone? It shouldn't have because the book honestly, it's just about martial arts and it's kind of boring. Um, it's not really paranormal at all, it's more of a mystery, the book's not bad but you know it's just not amazing. So we have these five books and uh, there's not really a whole lot to say about them. What do they give us? Not a lot, honestly. Um, like I said, the, pre the first two books, they sort of bring up the Ouroboros cult. And in my opinion, that is something that should have been continued. It's something that should have been carried on throughout the writing. It, it just seems to be on the back burner at the moment. Because there's a point where they just kidnap a bunch of authors. And I think one of them's meant to be Stephen King. But they just kidnap these authors. And it's, it's funny. It's really cool. 
but then they're not mentioned again and then it just goes back to being really simplistic really campy and understandably understandably i don't know what the ouroboros cult can actually do in uh, call to cradle because pete's a baby he doesn't really have a perspective he doesn't really care he's just a baby he wants to eat his th- his feet and drink mulched up hot dog call of the capper it's just what's his i don't even know his name what's his name arnold what a weird name arnold in all honesty call of the capper the main character reminded me of one of my well he's an old friend we don't talk anymore so that's what made it really weird because Arnold's exactly like one of my friends. And the thing is, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to spoil it. But I am digressing. I am sort of going on too many tangents, boys and girls. What, what am I going to say? What I'm going to say is that uh, the book, the series so far, has a habit of establishing interesting things and sort of just leaving them by the roadside. For instance, the Ouroboros cult was genuinely quite interesting. It's the secret society that pulled all the strings and then it's just sort of left. And it is mentioned, it is mentioned occasionally when Gardner remembers that he's written them in. But I think that the Ouroboros cult really could they, they're quite deserving of their own book and oh i don't want to i'm not going to criticize the guy's work but like say we got rid of call of the kappa and then replaced it with something like call of the ouroboros something weird like that and it could add like a nice little chalk drawing of the ouroboros and then we'd have something cool we'd have something cool or maybe call of the cradle i'm i think call of the cradle has um it's dedicated to somebody and I, i'm not gonna not gonna say who I'm not going to say who, because obviously it's a heartfelt message from Gardner himself. But what I'm really saying is that I think the Ouroboros cult really could have done with a bit more development. And maybe like a book from a member's perspective themselves. Maybe even Sam's perspective. That would have been interesting, reading the book from Sam's perspective as he carries out these heinous acts. But at the end of the day, it is just Gardner writing about what he wants to write about. Um, There's not a whole lot to say, you know. Um, Yeah, he's literally just writing books and enjoying life. Um, and occasionally poo posting on lit and now I wish that I could sit here and just hate on the guy but I'd say I'm at a point in my life where I don't have enough energy to dedicate it towards hating on somebody that I don't even know like I said you know me and Gardner we have zero communication he's not done anything bad to me so why would I hate on him you know I get the memes I get that it's trendy to hate on the guy but at the end of the day the books are entertaining reads like yeah like I said the Ouroboros cult really should have been developed more but at the end of the day Gardner he's a first time author he's writing these books out of just the enjoyment of writing I'm guessing it must feel amazing to have a bunch of books on your shelf and you can point well if you have friends that, that sounded quite mean sorry guys but if your mates come over and you can point at your book shelf you go look at them books for that guess who wrote them your mates will go over to the shelf and they say oh it's, uh, it's you isn't it and you go yeah me I wrote those books how cool is that like at the end of the day I think Gardner gets a lot of hate because of the endless shilling but I think he also twangs on a lot of insecurities of people because you, what you have here is a man who wanted to write books and did exactly that. The horror's called the horror so far what is it? Well it's the story of three boys versus the world as they navigate through the dark and twisted depths of Chicago. They face supernatural beings and murderous psychopaths intent on ending their lives but they always come out on top. It's an uplifting story about I suppose friendship if anything. The books are entertaining. I'd honestly recommend at least Call of the Cherokee. And yeah, that's all there is. There's not a whole lot of lore. It feels a bit like Family Guy in the sense that, you know, it's sort of like there is like stuff that's just happening in the Family Guy world, but it's not an ongoing thing. You know, you might have like, I think Peter Griffin and a chicken who always used to fight. I, I and honestly, I haven't watched it in years. But it's like that, you know, you got these stories that are self-contained, you have these creatures, there's, you know, characters show up in each other's books, but that's about it, you know, there's not a whole lot of lore. You got the Ouroboros cult, which is just put, picked up and put back down, you got Sam, who actually seems to be following his plans, you got Tim with a massive forehead, who just sort of wants to just kill stuff, but then you got Pete, he's come out of a psychiatric ward, He's living his best life. Mark and Johnny may or may not be in a homosexual relationship. It's never actually specified. There's some uh, nice tension there. And that's about it, guys. It's a lovely little book series. So that's about it, guys. I don't think these books were written with the intention of them having some sort of established law. I think there's a bunch of interconnected characters and interconnected goals. But apart from that, it just takes part in Chicago with the same characters. 
with different villains and that's really the sum of this book it's not the series isn't bad the series isn't bad but there's not a whole lot to talk about you have the changing in writing styles from Call of the Crocodile the Call of the Arcade Call of the Kappa and Call of the Cradle aren't very good and Call of the Chalky is a return to form so you know I've mentioned the Ouroboros cult that's really the one thing that bugs me because they're such an interesting concept and I'm calling it now as somebody I haven't even ordered copies of uh, Hunger of the Kangaroo, Reptilian Odyssey and Jugoku. I'm calling it now, I can only imagine Reptilian Odyssey is about how reptilians are actually the head of the Ouroboros cult. But yeah, you know, I wanted to talk about the horror so far and in doing so, it's uh, I've just sort of realised that there's not a whole lot of substance to these books. They are entertaining reads by all means, but there isn't that much depth to them. Now I could talk about the House of Leaves and write about how, you know, the formatting of the book changes as the character loses their sanity and how just fantastic the book is. But with this, it's sort of like, I don't think this book series was written to be super deep. I think it was written to be an entertaining series and not a whole lot else. And it does that fine. The book series is fun so far and I'm sure the next three will be great additions to the series. And that's where I'm going to have to leave you guys because I went into this expecting to do a deep dive and a deep analysis into all the characters but at the end of the day they're not written with that in mind. They are written purely to be vessels in which we sort of engage with the world through. And there's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, the writing is entertaining, and I am sure that the Horace Call series will go down in, I suppose, lit history as being a fantastic meme and a great series to read. And I suppose the horror so far is pretty promising. I am looking forward to reading Gardner's next works. I'm yet to order them, I'll have to do it at some point. Like I said, I will be talking about them on the channel. And, um,. Yeah, that's about it guys, so hopefully you've enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a comment, feel free to give a like, feel free to subscribe, you know, I am going to talk about the next three, then do um, a summary video, hopefully it's going to be better than this one, but you know, we're going to have to wait and see. So without further ado guys, take care, I hope you have a lovely day, hopefully any writing projects you've got going on are going to be amazing and you're going to just be an amazing author so without further ado thanks for giving me your time i hope you have a lovely life i hope you have a lovely day i hope you have a lovely month a year an eternity so without further ado take care